Hello everybody, I'm back with my grandma stole a, I'm going to just call it an Iheringi because that's what I'm told to be calling it, an Iheringi instead of a Grossa. But um, I've got some news today. Uh, it, this isn't anything that's publicized or anything that's, you know, got a paper done. And what's funny is that they say that there's no reason to do a paper because there is no actual description paper on grandma stole porteri. That the arachnologists and biologists that are studying these species in Chile, the grandma stole species, uh, do not recognize Porteri as a species. Um, what I'm being told is that there are three recognized species in Chile. The Gramostola species north, which is a smaller tarantula in the four to four and a half inch range, brown uh, with goldish uh, hue to the carapace and the abdomen, and they have a black band of hairs on the medial chalicerae extending down or descending down to the fangs. The Gramostola rosea, which we'll call the central Chilean tarantulas, which covers um, Gramostola rosea, RCF is what we what they're being sold as. The Gramostola porteri and the Gramostola species mall are all said to be just Gramostola rosea uh, and the porteri is just a color form a different color form of the Gramostola rosea. And I'm trying to understand what they were talking about, but what I understood is that the probability is that the Gramostola porteri are a higher altitude, Gramostola rosea are a lower altitude in the Atacama Desert. Again, I, I can't say that for gospel. So, you know, again, this is just stuff that I've heard and I've tried to interpret uh, in a layman's way because, you know, they're using scientific words and... Um, you know, the, the slight language barrier between English and, and, you know, what they're speaking down there. Um, so the English interpretation that they're typing is a little bit skewed. So, the, you know, the way the language works anyway. But uh, so, and then the Gramostola species south, which would be considered the Gramostola species Concepcion, which is contained to that little area down in southern Chile in the area of the town or whatever you want to call it, Concepcion. And those are distinguished from Gramostola rosea by double scopulae on the uh, tarsa and metatarsa of the spider's legs. So basically what they're saying in a nutshell is that Gramostola porteri has never been a recognized species. Even though it's listed as one in the World Spider Catalog, they said that the, wire, the World Spider Catalog is not a governing body. So there, it's just an information hub, basically. So you really can't go there and say that everything that they have listed there is actually a recognized species because they're not. And from what I'm understanding, Porteri is not a recognized species in Chile. It's They're called Gramostola rosea. And what they did, the exporters or the collectors that went out in the field and collected them, when they had a hard time selling them, they decided to change the name and gave it a, a new name, Porteri, and they start selling again because now people that have roseas want another one that's called Porteri. That's just the whole, they, they cater to the collection need of people that are in the hobby that, you know, you have to have them all. And if you're a Graham still a collector and, you know, you have a rosea and you have a Porteri, you have to have one of each, right? Even though they're probably the same species with just a different color form or color phase, I guess you could call them. So I thought that was interesting and something that, you know, you guys can kick around. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Again, don't don't expect anything in the near future, probably in the next couple of years. They're hoping to have this stuff done. Um, you know, I read stuff that was written by someone that's in the field now collecting specimens in in the central of Chile. So it would be what we would say are Porteri and Rosea um, to try and, and go over taxonomical differences between them if there is any and right now they from what I understand they don't have any taxonomical differences so we'll see what they come up with but uh, again I thought it was something interesting and you know it's one of the things I've been trying to get a get a handle on uh, the Gramostola species mall especially because I have one that probably isn't actually Gramostola species mall it's just a Gramostola species or Gramostola rosea and uh, they added that species mall because they were collected in the Damal region of Chile. That's the only, the only difference. So they're probably just Gramostola rosea. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of an interesting um, little aspect there. 
uh, of you know the the ver the myriad of, of work that needs to be done in you know the taxonomy field of identifying tarantulas um, again a lot of the work that was done you know and descriptions that were done back in the 1800s early 1900s from a lot of these tarantulas uh, you know the the way that they were written could be written wrong um, you know the location of collection could be written wrong paper could get switched between file to file you know how, whatever the reason may be so now that they have you know the ability to do DNA uh, with tarantulas, which they which they used in the Afonapelma um, revision, um, this will kind of help them figure out how to really get these things nailed down and what they really are, and then that'll be able to help them when new specimens become discovered. Um, that'll be a way for them to figure out what they have and what they're dealing with. And I think it's it's really interesting, you know, that we're in this new age. I mean, DNA has been out for a long time in, you know, investigative work, but, you know, in, in animals, especially insects, it's, I think it's a little new, um, not in animals, animals, you know, mammals, it, it's been done for a long time too. It's the same with reptiles and amphibians, but with insects, it's something that's a little bit new and arachnids and, you know, invertebrates period. So I thought that was kind of interesting to read. Um, and it, it kind of, you know, there, there were a couple of us that kind of had a feeling that grandma stole species mall wasn't really going to be Gramostella species mall that it was actually just going to be Gramostella rosea so uh, I think that's kind of the reason why people you know we can't find males that say Gramostella species mall attached to them so what I'm understanding based on what they're saying is that I could take a Gramostella rosea mature male and breed him with my Gramostella quote unquote species mall and they would mate and it would be perfectly fine because you're not cross breeding anything so, um, again, I, I don't, I'm not telling you to change your labels, um, you know, and, and there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to be steadfast and not wanting to change names from Porteri and just call them Rosea. Uh, it's, it's no different than the Homori Smithy change. Uh, when that, when this happens, hopefully people will be more open to all this and accept it a little bit better, uh, than they did the Homori Smithy change. Um, so Yeah as my cat is biting me for no reason. So, uh, yeah, leave your comments down below and, and tell me what you guys think about all this and, you know, what your suspicions were or if you even had any or if this is just, like, kind of breaking news to you and you have no clue that this was even going on because so many people just say, you know, Port Terry is a, is a grayish-black spider with, you know, a purplish or pinkish carapace where Gramstall Rosea is a red spider with a pinkish or purplish carapace, and that's how they're describing them and you should never really describe or identi identify a tarantula by color alone ever you, you just shouldn't do it you know i mean there's some that are completely obvious you know like a chromatopelma cyanea pubescens but that's the only species of that genus so um you know don't don't get fooled into color phasing or color thinking for identification for spiders it's easy for us people that don't do uh, taxonomy, you know, that we don't understand how they study these, the chelicerate teeth, the, you know, male uh, tibial hooks, the male uh, emboli, the female spermathicae, all that stuff that gets gets looked at, the, uh, you know, palpo, palpo setae, all this, all the different things that they, they go into describing uh, a tarantula is, is very, very interesting, and it's, it's intriguing me. I wish I, I had more access to it, and understood a little bit more of what they were talking about that would be kind of helpful but uh yeah so i just want to throw this out there for you guys as a hey this could be happening soon you know it, it could be happening in a couple years from now um but yeah kind of interesting so we'll talk to everybody later and uh this is just a bonus for today even though i didn't really want to do a third video today i thought this would be interesting and i wanted to get it out there uh so people can discuss it and see what everybody thinks